Hi, welcome to the small shed. Today I want to put some dust extraction on the spindle sander. See you in a minute. Now I've had the Triton belt and spindle sander for over a year now. By and large it's not too bad in regard to dust extraction. There is a port there which sucks the air down um, around the belt into the machine and, and out through the outlet port. But there does tend to be a little bit of um, spillover from it uh, and it's something I think I can probably solve relatively easily. Let's go and have a look at it and I'll show you. Now there's an extract port as I said on the side down uh, on the left hand side lower down and that does do quite a good job of pulling the air down through the sides of the the belt downwards and it gets most of it reasonably straightforwardly. The problem is by the time you get to the end of the belt here any airborne dust will tend to try and carry straight on and it doesn't necessarily get sucked down into that recess. And you can see from the pattern that we've got, if I take the belt part off for a moment, you can see it all goes down inside there and that's fine. It does do particularly the smaller stuff which is more dangerous anyway. It, it'll catch it and pull it down. Um, but you can see from the top that there is quite a lot of stuff going out and if I put the camera into that corner you would see a huge amount of dust all over things in the in the corner of the room. I think it's a fairly straightforward effectively of putting a cowling around it um, as far as I can and you can see what that may well catch. It would should catch pretty much all of the dust. Just pop it back on a minute there's a couple of things that I need to think about while I'm doing it. Obviously if you were to put the whole thing in almost like a box that started and ended with the belt there and there you would definitely cowl out most of it. But then of course if you then want to get onto the corner and do some sanding on that part of it it would then give you uh, more of a problem. So it needs to be a little bit multi-purpose I think. What I'm thinking of doing is building something which will effectively start at the back end, run along here, up to somewhere around there and then have a removable the reason I do that is that there is a screw hole in there that is for um, one of the fittings on it oh it's the the stop there's like a stop you can fit but if I put a screw in there I could actually fix that part relatively easily and then have a second part which either clips onto it or fits into it somehow which deals with that part when the two were together that will pretty much fully enclose the belt but then if I did need to get access I could take that one off and there is the slot there for the fitting that is the stop that's what normally fits there that fits in there normally and gives you a stop on the blade. Now it might be useful to keep that option as well so if it would be something that could fit down inside there that would be a double bonus just like a small tab to just hold the end part on. That's the intention um, I've had a quick look around, let's have a look and see what we've got by way of material to see. 
Right, I've had a play with a few bits of wood and actually it's much simpler than I thought it was going to be. I was going to start running curved sections on the ends. But actually if I, these are all right angles effectively. So if I put a right angle piece on there and a piece across the back, there'll be a cowl over the top of it as well. Um, just stopping short of the belt line there. And then I'll put a, a notch in this, or a, a cut all the way down this piece. Probably put magnets on the end of it that will hook into there or it can magnet itself onto this and then you can just take this piece off if you want to right I've managed to find a bit of I think it's 9mm ply relatively straight yeah 9mm ply um, that I used on the Mark 1 dust extract from the um, chop saw but I think that'll do me because I only need 150 mil high, which is roughly half of it. Um, so I think I'm going to make the back and the base out of that, and then I'm going to. I've got the polycarbonate that was left from the cyclone, and I'll just do a covering piece on the top of that so I can actually see what's going on, just to make sure that nothing's coming undone on the belt sander or that the belt's tracking properly and all that sort of thing. Right, I've taped together the basic structure of the back part. A bit of masking tape just to check it out. That'll go somewhere like that. That'll enable me to get at that rounded end. So all I need now is to make a small piece that'll sit on the front. That'll go in that section. And fully box that off for most of the time. Um, but then I'll be able to take it off if I want to just use the end to round something over. Right, I've made the infill piece there that goes there. Uh, it's time really to glue it up. I might just let a small piece in there just to 
act as a baffle on that. But on the whole, it's doing quite well because there's quite a lot of sawdust in there that it's already trapped and that's without the vacuum on. Right now I've got a fixed amount of length marked off on that piece of timber. I'm going to just do one sand without any um, cover on it but using the extraction to take it from there down to that line. Right, so that's pretty much it. I've put a bracket on the left hand side, made with a bit of brass, just bent over. That drops into the recess on the end of the table. Got the hole there where it goes over the um, fitting for the stop block, and that can be taken off and it'll still fit the same. And then that fits on with a magnet to give me the end cover when I'm just doing a straight cut because that will give me the full length to be able to sand right the way across and then if I want the corner I can just take that off So there we are, I've seemed to produce something that not only reduces the amount of dust floating around off the top of that table, but it has reduced the airborne um, dust down quite considerably as well. So I'm looking at it as a result, it's not perfect, but it's certainly an improvement on what I had before. Hope it was of interest and uh, look forward to seeing you next week and we'll do something different. I'll see you then. Bye.